Hey everyone, this is your five minute daily devotional. Today's scripture verses are coming from Matthew 16 verses 13 through 17. They read as follows. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elisha, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Do you ever wonder why God asks questions in scripture? Why does Jesus ask questions? I mean, he is literally God. He knows everything. He knows all things at all times in all ways. He knows what we will think before we think it, what we will say before we say it. He knows literally everything. He even knew what his disciples were thinking and what they would say and what they would do before they did. It was Jesus who told Nathaniel, also called Bartholomew, that he saw him sitting under a fig tree before Philip came to call him to follow Jesus. It was Jesus who addressed the disciples when they were talking amongst themselves before they asked him, who would be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts. The Bible says that he knew their thoughts on this topic. He knew what they were thinking. So then why would he ask them the questions in our verses today? I heard a preacher once say that when God asks questions, the questions and the answers aren't for him, they're for us. For example, God knew right where Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden when he asked them after they had sinned, when he asked them, where are you? The answer wasn't for him, it was for them. They needed to realize where they were and where they were in their relationship with God, how they had removed themselves from their relationship with the Lord. And I don't believe it was a place that he was seeking and knowing where they were. It was the state of being, the state of their relationship with the Lord, because that question led to another, which led to another, which led to another, which led to them realizing how far they had gotten away from the Lord, how far they had walked away from God. In our passage today, Jesus knows how each and every one of his disciples are with him. He knows their state of being with him. He knows their relationship with him. But just like Adam and Eve, perhaps he's asking these questions not so that he can get an answer from them, but so that they can hear the answer for themselves. They can realize how far or how close they have gotten to the Lord. Adam and Eve, they answered God's questions and they realized how far they had gotten away from him. But in our passage today, Peter answers God's questions and he gets to see how close he's gotten to God. Peter's answer is matter of fact. He tells him, you're the Messiah, you're the son of the living God. And Jesus responds, you are blessed. You have been with my father. You have received that revelation from the father. No one could have revealed that to you but the father. And because you've gotten that revelation, that means that you've been spending time with him. You are adoring him. Your heart is right towards him. You are loving him. That is why he revealed that to you. Questions led to Adam and Eve's realization of how far they had fallen away from the Lord. But questions also led to Peter's realization of how close he had gotten to the Lord. So here are some questions that you can think about in your own walks with the Lord. Who's the first person you think about when you wake up in the morning? Who do you run to when you have a crisis? Who's the first person that you run to or call when you have something wrong? Who would you empty your bank accounts for if they asked you to? Now these questions aren't to condemn anyone at all, so please don't take them that way, but they're an opportunity for you to think about if you could not answer Jesus to each and every one of those questions, then perhaps take this as an opportunity, take this as a reminder to draw closer to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, may it be you. May it be you first and foremost in our lives, in our hearts, in our wills, in our emotions, Lord. May it be you. May it be you we run to in a crisis. You we think about first in the morning. You we would totally give everything for God. May it be you. And thank you, God, that you don't condemn us, Lord, when it's not, but it's a reminder, God, for us to draw closer to you, Lord, to spend more time with you, to love on you more, that it becomes ingrained, Lord, that it is naturally you, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to run to people, Lord, when we need something, when we are in trouble, Lord. You use people, Lord, but help us to run to you and you decide who you use. You decide how you're going to help us, Lord. Then may you be first in our lives, God. May you 
be the answer to every question, Lord, in our hearts, God. May it always be you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. If you enjoyed this devotional, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you guys. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing day. God loves you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.